Welcome back to our channel, where we explore remarkable projects from around the globe. Today, we uncover the mystery behind the European Union's astounding $27 billion investment in constructing a 57-kilometer tunnel through a mountain. This ambitious endeavor holds the promise of revolutionizing transportation and boosting connectivity between regions. Join us as we delve into the motivations driving this colossal project and the transformative impact it will have on trade, travel, and unity within the EU. Get ready to be amazed by the engineering marvels and the vision that led to the creation of this extraordinary tunnel. Welcome to the breathtaking Susa Valley in northern Italy, a region of majestic mountains and scenic beauty that lies near the border with France. Life here embodies tranquility, simplicity, and serenity. However, beneath the surface of this picturesque landscape, a colossal construction project is gathering momentum. In just a few years, an extraordinary high-speed railway will traverse this region as part of the ambitious Trans-European Transport Network. But this grand vision faces a significant challenge, a massive mountain range stands in its way. To conquer this formidable terrain, construction crews are embarking on an unprecedented feat of deep excavation and tunneling. This is the extraordinary tale of the construction of the world's longest rail tunnel, forging its path through the heart of the Alps. At first glance, traveling between two of the largest cities in France and Italy might seem like a straightforward endeavor, as they are separated by only a few hundred kilometers. However, the current train journey takes around four hours to navigate the mountainous landscape. Much of the meandering route was established centuries ago and no longer meets the standards of modern international travel. The historic Freges Tunnel, dating back to 1871, is now inadequate. With a single tube and a sloped alignment, trains expend more energy to traverse this tunnel compared to a flatter route. Although the Freges Tunnel holds sentimental value and underwent upgrades for modern trains in the early 2000s, it must now yield to a far more ambitious endeavor. Since 2013, the Trans-European Transport Network has been a focal point of construction efforts, aiming to establish a vast network of new and enhanced transportation links across Europe. Among the nine main routes, the Lyon-Turin Line, also known as the Brenner Base Tunnel, assumes a pivotal role within the 3,000-kilometer Mediterranean corridor, connecting Hungary to Spain. Upon completion, this 57.5-kilometer rail tunnel will secure the distinction of being the world's longest single rail tunnel, surpassing the Brenner and Gothard base tunnels. The Lyon-Turin line represents a monumental engineering achievement, employing innovative construction methods that delve deeper underground than the existing railway. This approach eliminates the need for uphill climbs, allowing for a more direct and efficient route. However, it also entails tunneling through vast expanses of challenging mountainous rock formations. This base tunnel is aptly named for its location at the mountain's base, in contrast to the shortest point across the mountain achieved through elevation gain. Consequently, the tunnel extends to a length of 50 to 60 kilometers, a far cry from the mere 13 kilometers of a traditional mountain railway. Designed to accommodate both passenger and freight traffic, the Lyon-Turin line spans over 270 kilometers, with around 70% of the route lying in France and the remaining 30% in Italy. The construction and management of the cross-border section are overseen by Tunnel European Lyon Turin, TELT, jointly owned by the French and Italian governments. The total cost of the project is estimated at approximately $27 billion, with $9 billion allocated to the main tunnel. Funding is provided by the European Union, 40%, Italy, 35%, and France. Beyond its significance within the European network, the new railway promises substantial environmental benefits. Once operational, it is projected to remove over a million trucks from the roads annually, resulting in a reduction of 3 million tons of CO2 emissions per year. Additionally, the travel time between the two cities will be significantly reduced, shaving two hours off the current journey. While modern construction methods play a significant role in this project, traditional drill and blast techniques are still employed to overcome particularly challenging sections. Large drilling machines carve their way through the rock, complemented by controlled explosives. However, in line with the demands of a 21st century megaproject, state-of-the-art tunnel boring machines, TBMs, are also utilized. Given the limitations of traditional excavation techniques, exploratory tunnels were constructed to gather information about the underground conditions. Approximately one-fifth of the 162 kilometers of underground sections have been completed, with significant progress achieved between 2015 and 2019. However, progress slowed in subsequent years due to various factors, including the COVID-19 pandemic and contractor selection. 
Nevertheless, in 2021, three major contracts were signed in France, and the plan for completing the remaining work in Italy is expected to be announced in 2023. In addition to horizontal excavation, the construction of a tunnel of this magnitude necessitates vertical progress, primarily to establish ventilation systems that ensure breathable air and smoke-free conditions within the tunnel. To achieve this, four ventilation shafts are being constructed for the Montini Base Tunnel. Each shaft boasts a diameter of 5.2 meters and plummets 500 meters deep, surpassing the height of Shanghai's World Financial Center. The construction process involves drilling a narrow hole from the ground to the tunnel, followed by attaching a cutting head to create a raised boring machine. This machine excavates the shaft from the bottom upwards. Although substantial work remains, the project is still in its early stages, with an estimated completion date in 2032. As is customary with large infrastructure projects, the Leon Turin Railway has encountered significant opposition. In Italy, the No TAV, Treno Alta Velocita, movement has been campaigning against the project for decades, particularly in the Susa Valley. The movement argues that the railway will cause irreversible damage to the land and advocates for redirecting funds toward other services, such as hospitals. While changes have been made to address some concerns, a significant portion of the movement remains steadfastly opposed to the project. Opposition has also emerged in France, with the mayor of Lyon even calling for a halt to the project. Critics highlight the environmental impact and argue that funds should be redirected to bolster the existing line. They claim that millions of euros intended for rail infrastructure in the region have been allocated to road projects instead. Despite the opposition, the project continues to receive support from both governments and the European Union, ensuring its progression. While the justification for a base tunnel of this magnitude solely for high-speed passenger trains is debatable, it aligns with the successful approach taken in Switzerland. The Gothard Base Tunnel, for example, primarily serves hundreds of freight trains traveling between northern Italy and Germany daily, rather than a few passenger trains per hour. The Leon Turin Railway, despite facing more formidable challenges than most high-speed rail projects, steadily gains momentum. Its completion promises lower carbon travel, enhanced trade, and fills a crucial gap in Europe's transportation puzzle. While the communities at the heart of the project may not unanimously agree, the sheer scale and ambition of this construction project are undeniable.